How will Dick Grayson hope to save a city so hopelessly corrupt as Bloodhaven with supervillains on one side and the mob on the other? Well, let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 81 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the issue, we see the swearing in of new Bloodhaven mayor Melinda Zuko, daughter of Tony Zuko, the man responsible for the death of the Flying Graysons. And while the swearing in is a big show for the public, the real show happens behind the scenes as the mob and blockbuster celebrate their newest puppet leader. Melinda swears that under her, the mob's control over Bloodhaven will only grow and new revenue sources will be soon to open up. Now from there, we transition on over to Nightwing, where we left him at the end of the previous issue. He had come face to face with the mysterious supervillain serial killer known as Heartless, who had been preying on the local homeless community. Yet, despite everything we know about this guy, it seems that he doesn't actively want to hurt the children who are trapped by a fire that was started by him. Saying that he only wants to feed on their fear and he can't do that if they're dead, apparently. Tim Drake, Robin, who has been assisting Nightwing this whole time, swings into action and tries to evacuate the kids to the nearby pier. Heartless tries to use his high-tech heart-stealing gun on Nightwing, but he's able to dodge it. It seems that this guy is well-armored and has certain superhuman enhancements to him that allow him to punch like a Mack truck. Luckily for Dick, though, this guy is untrained, undisciplined, and very much underestimated Nightwing on their first meeting. Dick hopes that he can simply choke this guy out and put an end to a reign of his terror once and for all. But, as it would seem, maybe Dick ultimately underestimated a Heartless as well, as it seems that he had already rigged the pier with explosives, meaning that Dick has to choose between taking this guy in or saving the children. Robin and the kids end up getting stuck between a rock and a hard place as the dock they're on quickly explodes into flame. Nightwing can't get there in time, but him and Oracle have the idea to try and inhale as many nearby ships as possible to make the save. There's a very tense second there where you're not sure if anyone is actually going to help. After all, Bloodhaven has been shown to be a pretty dog-eat-dog -dog city, yet despite all of that, good Samaritans actually do come in to make the save. And in a very fun segment that actually ended up plucking my heartstrings way more than I thought possible, all the ships are named after different Nightwing writers from over the years. The Devon, the Seely, and the Jurgens. No word about the Dixon, though. I have to imagine maybe it's one of those boats that got caught up in one of those boats parades you love so much in the states these days you know the ones Nightwing ended up suffering a concussion during his fight with Heartless and as such has to be dragged back to his apartment by Oracle. While he was out though, Barbara had done some digging into the mysterious woman that Dick had seen sitting down with Sal Maroney. Obviously, if you've been paying attention, you know that that's Melinda Zuko, who as we discover in this issue is actually Tony Zuko's daughter from his very first marriage. Tony abandoned Melinda when she was eight and she's been on an upward trajectory ever since. She apparently has a massive redacted file on her at the FBI, which they don't give to just anybody. And now, with the daughter of the man who killed his parents as mayor of his city, there's a good chance Nightwing can't trust the political powers or even the cops when it comes to trying to fix Bloodhaven moving forward. Against the wishes of his friends, though, Dick ends up going out later that night to try and have a sit-down with Melinda by breaking into her home, despite the fact that he's still not recovered from his injuries from the previous fight. It's for all those reasons and more Aubrey, Melinda's sword toting I'm gonna assume girlfriend, but I'm not exactly sure at this point, actually gets the drop on Nightwing. She, unlike Heartless, is trained and actually pretty good. Nightwing gets knocked out for the second time today and ends up coming too tied to a chair. He's also missing his mask, meaning Melinda Zuko knows exactly who Dick Grayson is. Dick refuses to be done in by the daughter of the man who killed his parents, but it's right around here Melinda ends up dropping a major bomb. She says that despite the fact that she was raised by the mob and Sal Maroney, Tony Zuko is not her father and Nightwing is not her enemy. That's because she claims her real father is John Grayson, meaning that Dick is actually her brother. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close, everybody. And so that was Nightwing issue number one, everybody. And once again, Tom Taylor manages to deliver one hell of a layered story. We got action, we got fun, we got adventure, and right at the end, we got a lot of mystery and intrigue. I know the concept of secret half-siblings has been done to death so much in comic books to the point of almost being a cliché, but I trust Tom Taylor enough to do something interesting with it. After all, Melinda could very well just be lying to Dick. There's also a good chance that maybe she was lied to about her own parentage as part of a bigger conspiracy. Personally, for what it's worth, I appreciate that we're not retreading old ground that we already saw in Black Mirror, a story that also just so happened to involve Nightwing going head-to-head -head with Tony Zuko's daughter. 
In fact, hey, now would actually probably be the perfect time to bring back the other Zuko daughter, don't you think? Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one another very positive 8 out of 10. So much of what I love about Nightwing is so thoroughly on display in this series. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.